you need to be fishing ponds differently this winter than you were like during the summer that is super important and that may be where a lot of people are messing up so i was like man this is a perfect time to harp about this topic real quick there he is that's a bass oh he's already got it oh man so each side of this bank is going to slightly drop off going on guys welcome to another video today we're going to be doing some pond fishing i'm super excited about it i'm hoping to catch some i went from atlanta to savannah today and we're going to try to catch some bass it's probably going to be really finicky but i just don't know if it's going to be as bad as it was in atlanta at least the pond fishing in general but it's going to be fun maybe we uh include some bass fishing tips today to help you guys catch some more fish this winter if i have some stuff on my mind that i think we should talk about then that's what i'll do but i have three poles rigged up and i'm going to be taking um those three poles out there let me go ahead and show you what i have rigged up and uh what we're going to expect experiment with today and see if we can catch some bass on it by the way if you aren't subscribed be sure to click that subscribe button if you're new to the channel hit that notification bell also pepper that like button up if you're enjoying the content and uh you want to see some more videos also if you want to see some more like videos that you have just up in your head be sure to leave a comment below all right so like i said i have three poles rigged up on this first one i just have an old jig then as always i fish a year round i have an old drop shot on all right and then lastly, an old jerk bait. Those are the three baits we're gonna work with today, but let me show you the combos that I have these on. So the first rod is actually the jig one, and I actually just have it on a standard medium heavy. When I'm pond hopping, doing that whole deal, I just throw a jig on a medium heavy. I actually have it on 15 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon and Vizx. I'll link all that stuff below, but I have it on a Defy Black by 13 Fishing. For the jerk bait, I actually have this on a medium fast rod right here, and this is um, obviously the Fade Black. You guys cannot miss this rod, the old green one. And I have it on a concept a and i have it on 10 pound fluorocarbon if you guys are wondering about the jerk bait that's just an old mega bass this is actually a 110 plus one which i usually want to throw in ponds i'd usually just throw the 110 um the plus one goes slightly deeper as you guys can tell it has a little you know bill on the end of it but um that's what i had tied on so that is what we're gonna try today and see if we can catch some fish i'm just gonna have to jerk that thing up I, if you guys watch my jerk bait video if you haven't i'll link it up on the screen also my jig video i'll uh, link that one up here as well i was telling you guys about jerking your jerk bait up especially in shallow water so that jerk bait is stay and it's not digging digging into the bottom like that but then i have a fate black right here my little spinning combo and uh this is a creed gt by 13 fishing and i have it to braid the fluorocarbon leader and I just got an old little robo worm right there and that's just like a little morning dawn color and uh those are the three rods that we're going to take out to the pond today all three of these baits we're going to see what's going to work best and uh go from there we're going to probably start off with like the jerk bait and the jig see what we can get and worst comes to worst the bites get if everything gets really tough then we're going to switch over to this drop shot so that's the plan let's get it oh man does that look good Is that water running right there should be a fish right on the edge of that I'll flip this jig right up there. Got that little twin grub trailer. One of them's gone, one of the grubs, but it should be fine. Let's see. Let's see if we can catch this one right off the bat. God, there he is. Oh, he's running with it. What in the world? That must have been a tiny one. Look at this. Are you kidding me? That's fourth bite. It's biting it the same way. It's nibbling and running off. No way that's a bass. There he is. That's a bass. There we go. That's not a bad one. That is not a bad one at all. I'll take him. Look at that guy. Oh yeah, get on up here, boy. Oh, don't tangle my drop shot now. He is not big, but that is the first fish of the day. We got the monkey offered back finally after a good bit of fishing. It was on the old pink robo worm on a drop shot. First baby old bass, a little thick guy. And uh, I do not mind catching him like that. If they'll bite, that's the only thing. It's been super slow. All right, buddy. Oh, golly. He seems hyper. <laughs> well, there we go. That was our first bass today. It's been super tough. I just want to catch a few now. That's all I want. Get us a little video rocking on this little pink robo worm. We're going to rig this back up on this drop shot. Just like that. Let's see if we can get another bite. That was a bass bite. <laughs> I could tell when he bit it. You know, he just loaded up on it. It wasn't like when he was taking it, but it wasn't like the other ones where they're just nibbling. <laughs> he did nibble it, but it wasn't, it wasn't much. 
Uh oh. There he is. Another bass. There we go, baby. Drop shot is getting it done today. That was such a soft bite. That is awesome right there. Look at that bass. Such a soft bite. Another one about, uh, he's a little bit smaller. Look at that right there in the top of his mouth. Oh, he just barely came off. That's awesome. But the second fish, I'm telling you, I really don't mind catching this size since of how tough it is today. But the drop shot seems to be working. The jerk bait and jig was just not working earlier and just slowed down. I'm telling you, a drop shot any time of year will catch bass. It's such a subtle profile. And, you know, you can just catch a lot of fish on it if you put it in the right place, right in front of a fish. But uh, second fish today, I'm happy to catch that one. Let's see if we can get another one. That was pretty quick after the first one. All right, buddy. Let's see if you're hyper too. Eh, he ain't, he ain't taking off like the other one. Gosh, guys, that was a very soft bite. I mean, super soft. Was not expecting it like that. And so those other ones, I don't even know if those were bass or just peppering it. And then that first one, he actually ticked it. But that one, he like ticked it once and just barely sucked that thing in. It took him a minute after he ticked it to actually eat it. They are just so finicky right now i don't blame them it's, it's pretty pretty chilly outside it's that weird transition phase or it gets you know it's going from super hot to super cold like this and this fish just get really tough to catch oh my god there's a bass right there he ate it he freaking ate it you were looking at me two seconds ago why'd you eat it you literally saw me buddy thank you for spoiling me even though you're not big that is the third fish today. God, that is the smallest bass ever. Look how small he is. I don't even know what he was thinking trying to eat that little worm right there. Let's see if we can find them stacked out here. See, these ponds fish so much different than in the summer. So you really got to locate this fish and figure out where they're sitting. Because in the summer, you know, they're pushed up more on the bank, which I'll talk about that here in a minute. But it's just so much different in the winter. You really got to locate you know, where those fish are in the pond because they're not going to be in the same areas as they were in the summer. Which I'll talk about that here in a little bit just to see if I can help you guys next time you go out and fish some banks and or some ponds. and Maybe it'll help you locate those fish that you're catching this summer and really put a herding on them because these winter bass, I mean, some of them can be so fat. Big old fat winter bass. And that is what we're looking for today. I just have not had the opportunity to hook into a big one. But I am happy with what we caught so far and how quick we've caught them because it's been pretty tough before this. But then again, I haven't thrown the drop shot. Maybe this is what's really helping. So this is the worm that I'm actually using, if you guys are wondering. It's called Plumberry. It's just a six-inch straight tail uh, drop shot worm right here. It was in the tackle video of my mom where I gave her $50. If you guys want to go check that one out, pop it up on the screen. But uh, this is the one I'm using. It's kind of like a morning dawn color. I love a pink worm for a drop shot. That is definitely like my favorite. If I had to pick like any worm, definitely like a pink worm or like a standard old little green pumpkin with uh, either like red flake or green flakes good as well. But I'm telling you, if you haven't tried a pink worm on a drop shot, you guys need to right now it's really good so i was actually coming out here to film like just a standard old fishing video like just a standard winter pond fishing video and it kind of like came to mind that you need to be fishing ponds differently this winter than you were like during the summer that is super important and that may be where a lot of people are messing up so i was like man this is a perfect time to harp about this topic real quick so pretty much in the summer when it's super warm you can pretty much catch those large mouth in these ponds anywhere whether it's on the bank whether it's out there deep in the pond whether you're sight fishing you can see them on the bank you're flipping towards them you can really catch them anyway and it's it's pretty easy at least pond fishing in the summer seems to be the best for me i'm um, obviously the springs springtime is really great as well um the fall can be decent but um the summertime is when you can really whack them you know anywhere on the bank out deep in that whole deal well when it transitions to this winter phase i don't know if you guys saw my last video where i was actually out on lake lanier spooning those fish in around 30 foot to 65 foot of water that's just because those fish are all deep i can if i went and tried to really catch a lot of bass up shallow right now it's probably not going to happen one thing that you can do is if there's a lot of rock on a bank um if you guys didn't know or like a boat ramp rock and concrete like that actually heats up so like in the bright sun of the day like it is right now you know some of that rock like during the middle of the day once there's a lot of heat on it those fish can get up on that stuff you know hold on to it and you could actually really catch a lot of fish on it because i know in the video i did catch some on rock with a jerk bait is because you know it's warmed up and that whole deal but the majority of the fish and pretty much all of them came in like a deep ditch or a transition on the bottom you know back by those creeks and that whole deal well moving on to ponds 
So in the summer, you're throwing up on the bank, you're catching bass everywhere, and that whole deal it seems really simple, at least compared to now. And now that you're in this winter phase, it transitions really hard, you know, it was super, super hot, and then it got cold really quick. Those fish are in major shock. So what I try to do when I come out here to these ponds is I'm mainly throwing out in the middle now. And I'm trying to find, obviously I can't tell because I don't have a graph or I'm not on a boat or anything in these ponds, but I'm trying to find those little ditches or little drop-offs or transitions where it's a little bit deeper. So whether it's in the middle of the pond, that's kind of what I'm doing now is, you know, each side of the bank's kind of dropping down and it's kind of like a, it's like a ditch that's running through pretty much. And that's really what I try to target this time of year, especially when winter bass fishing because it's so important, it's so important to fish like that. And I had a lot of people commenting, Noah, you know, I can't catch any fish. I feel like all the fish are dead, this, this, and that. Use this one tip and see if it helps you and then come back on my video and let me know if it helped you catch a lot more fish because I know, I'm, I promise you, if you start casting wherever is deeper in the pond right now, wherever that maximum depth is, even though ponds don't really get that deep majority of the time, you, sh you should catch some more fish. So I would like you guys to go try that. Leave a comment below if you, you have noticed that or you already know that. I just thought that's something I should talk about because that is very important. I do all these tip videos, but that is something very important to know. So target those little drop-offs, ditches, deep banks in these ponds to catch more fish. I'm gonna rig up this drop shot worm. We're gonna get back out there and try to catch a few more fish. Also, I will show an example. I'll bring this camera out and I'll show you the pond and kind of what I'm talking about by like the deeper areas or like where it necks down and you know gets deeper. If it's like a little ditch or a little creek channel, whatever it is, I'll show you when I go over this pond so looking at this pond right here pretty much in the summer or late summer early fall there's actually some pipes in the water i was fishing catching them off of in this more of shallow water i was throwing all up around this bank if you watch all my videos at this pond that's really where i was catching them now around this winter time is transitioning the fish are changing i haven't got any really bites over there and it's been kind of more out in the middle so i'm fan casting trying to figure out you know where this is the deepest part of this pond and as you can tell it kind of necks down so each side of this bank is going to slightly drop off all right and that bank same as that one it's going to drop off and then in the middle it's going to be like a flat bottom so it's going to have that drop off and then a flat bottom and it's kind of like a little ditch that's sitting right down there in the middle so when you're fishing these places like if i came to this pond i'd highly suggest like throwing out here right out here in the middle and then right out here right down the pipe there's like a little drop off and that's what I would really focus on when fishing these areas. I wouldn't really go down the bank and start throwing right here. I'd really focus on, you know, right down the pipe, the deepest parts of the pond. And that would help you catch a lot more fish when coming to these areas. I know it's hard to figure out because of the bank and that this, this, and that whole deal because you're, you can't really see anything and you're not graphing. So focus, you know, where it necks down like this on both sides, right there, right down the middle. Oh, he's already got it. Oh, man. Oh, it's a pretty decent one. Bigger than the first two. That was the next cast. Look at that. Maybe we just found some stacked up out there in the middle. Yeah, that's the biggest one yet by far. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah, baby. Nice. You're not too much bigger, but I'll take you right there. That is a fourth fish. This fish is spoiling me. Hook just came out like the last or that second one. That was the best one. I can tell he's just a lot heavier. But another little baby bass on the old drop shot. The drop shot is killing it right now. That finesse approach is whacking him. Man. Ooh, I can tell where something tried to bite him right there or something. Fought on him. There's probably some big dogs in here somewhere. I know I've lost one one time. That was a pretty big giant. So maybe we'll hook one. But hopefully we found some stacked out there in the middle. We're going to make another cast. See if we can get three fish and three casts. Gosh, that'd be crazy with how tough it is. Thank you for biting, old Bobby. Oh, man. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Number four. Uh-oh. Oh, what in the world? He wasn't on there yet. He's still nibbling away. I don't know if you guys can really tell, but this is an example. You know, super dirt shallow on this bank, and it just drops off right there right where it drops off and that side's doing the same thing it's not as shallow over there it's a steeper drop so they're more likely to be on that bank but they're both dropping off and your deepest part's going to be about right here more towards that bank since it's so shallow and it's more like that but you can tell it's just like a deep little hole that goes down right here that is perfect for a bass to sit up in oh my god he's already got it small 
baby bass right there. That was the fifth fish today though. And he ate it, golly. Yeah, he wanted that thing. Fifth fish, I'm at this little other pond right here that connects to this one. And that is the first cast and the first fish right there. It's a little baby. Usually uh, it depends, you know, there might be some more in this one. Or there might be some more in the other one, you know, they travel. So they might be stacked up in this one. We might catch a lot. Uh-oh. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? That was about a two pounder. Mmm. These fish are just treating me dirty today. I'm just glad we're getting bites. I'm happy that we're getting bites for how tough it is. All right, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and sign off this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and got a few tips out of it. I was just thinking we were just gonna do standard pond fishing today during the old winter time, but uh, I decided, you know, when I was out there fishing, I just thought, I was like, man, you know, a lot of people are probably fishing totally wrong and they're probably wondering why they're not getting bites i mean yes the fishing is tough but to get more bites especially to catch a bigger bass that's one thing i didn't say i mean you can always catch largemouth up on the bank or wherever it is but the bigger ones are going to be out deeper and those little drop offs and those little transitions on the bottom that's where they're going to be holding i mean if you see some cover on the bank like whether it's some tree lay downs whatever it is still feel free to fish those and if you like have some cover on the bank that you were catching fish on during the summer I mean, still try it out. I, I always do that. I'm like, I like feel guilty if I don't throw at that type of stuff. But all in all, fish those deep areas that, you know, come down together. There's little ditches and there's little drop offs where it gets deeper. There's steeper banks and you will catch more bass. If you see some rock, be sure to fish that. If the sun's up, warming that stuff up during the day and you should get some more bites. But thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to leave a comment below on what bass fishing tips video you'd like to see next. All in all, what fishing videos you'd like to see next. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys haven't subscribed, be sure to click that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell as well. Thank you guys so much for the support. I'll catch you guys in the next video. I got sky like the brother man, uh I crack cars, get hella bands, uh I got a bra from the motherland, uh I got shooters with hands, uh I get it, get it up anyway, uh Pull up skirt in the hurricane, uh I crack cars, cook every day, uh I get money, uh, every day, uh